Hello, everybody. Um, today, I'm going to present you my research, PhD research called Constraint, in which I look at the influence of formal characteristics on the transmission of the Middle Dutch poem, the Martijn Trilogy, which is written by the famous Flemish author Jacob van Maarland. As you may know, during the Middle Ages, the material transmission of texts depended entirely on the manual transcription of literature, with scribes making copies of copies of copies by hand. And this results in unique variants in each manuscript copy. And the so-called new or material philology really focuses on this variation as such, and on how scribes manipulate a text to their liking. But unfortunately, still little is known about the underlying mechanisms influencing this complex copying process. And an aspect that I think deserves further empirical research is a text form, such as the rhyme or rhyme scheme of a text, the stanza form, but also the text structure in general. Little is known about the influence of text form on the transmission, although evidence from psycholinguistics, such as the a very famous research of Rubin, suggests that formal features could be labeled as constraints that prevent change. Luckily, a uh, more computational research is, uh, on this topic is shaping up, such as, such as the research of uh, Jacob Tyson. And I wanted to do quite the same thing, a computational investigation of this constraint transmission hypothesis. And I'm looking at the Martijn trilogy by Jacob van Maarland. But why this text? Maarland did not use the dominant paired rhyme in his text, but he really invented a totally new form of 13 verses per stanza and with a very unique rhyme scheme. But despite this very special form, little research has been done on the transmission of this text. So I wanted to change that. Um, I have computationally aligned um, all 17 different, uh, different uh, text witnesses of the Martijn trilogy um, before 1500 by using digital collation tools. To do that, um, we needed to digitize all those text witnesses, and you can find all my uh, transcriptions on my GitHub page, and they are available in XML. We have aligned this corpus um, at the character level, and we did this in two ways. First, we used um, the Collate X software, which is really the standard for this uh, research problems. It's really optimized for it, but it also comes with a lot of bells and whistles. So just for the sake of comparison, we also used a more plain, out-of-the-box, needleman winch algorithm. In this alignment, we had options to keep or exclude my markup for capital letters, abbreviations, and punctuation. And my total corpus consists of 15,310 verses. And here, you, for example, you see an example of such an alignment of one of my um, verses. So we did this alignment to uh, validate this constraint transmission hypothesis. And one of the main ideas is that, for example, the last word of a verse is more protected by the rhyme. So as you see there, um, in the last position, there is less variation. So the line should look like that. We test this, and here you see our graph. Uh, we took the average, average mismatch at the character level, resulting from the alignment, both for Calate X and Neil and Winch. And on the x-axis, you have the relative position of a character in a verse, because not every verse has the same length. On the y-axis, you have this mean of mismatches of those characters in those specific positions. What do we see? Indeed, the first final characters, which are part of those rhyming words, are less subject, subject to spelling variation than the preceding regions of a verse. So we see a clear decline in variation, which could be caused by uh, the fact that there, that, there, that there are rhyming words. This is the first level variation. We also looked at uh, the macro relationships between manuscripts. So we took the um, mean deviation between manuscript pairs. So we compared A with B, A with C, A with T. Um, and we took that to create a distance table which forms the input for this cluster map. What do we see? We see two main clusters, L, G, F, B, R, and D, and on the other hand, O, B, A, and C. And this is in line with what we know uh, from the transmission of the Martijn trilogy so far. So in 1918, two researchers, Verdam and Leenders, created a stemma of the transmission, so a hypothesis of the 
genealogical relationships between manuscripts, and they also find two main clusters. But the stemma is only based on the 10 witnesses that were known by them. They also found this, and it's funny how they talk about it. For example, they say the first one are the Fulgata, and they are not that important because they are under the influence of other manuscripts, but the other ones are really good. They are of greater independence because they are not under the influence of other manuscripts. And last but not least, um, we also are looking at the abbreviation density of all the manuscripts. Um, like I said in the beginning, the new or material philology um, really focuses on scribal variation. And for example, uh, to uh, calling attention to accidental such, such as uh, punctuation and abbreviations. For now, we are looking at abbreviations. And as you may know, they are used to save space or to save time. And several studies have shown that um, uh, the smaller the manuscript, so the less space there is, the more abbreviations there are. And we wanted to check this hypothesis. What did we do? We created the, uh, we or looked at the abbreviation ratio of each manuscript. So we divided the length of a verse when it's abbreviated by the length of a verse when it is written out. And then we get this result. For example, um, G and C are very much abbreviated, but D and C, there are almost no abbreviations. But is this because of the manuscript size? That's the question. Here uh, we see regression plots with on the x-axis the manuscript size in square centimeters, so the surface of a manuscript. On the y-axis you have this ratio. And indeed, what do we see? G, for example, is a very small manuscript, so there is less space, so there are a lot of abbreviations. C is the biggest manuscript in my corpus, and there are almost no abbreviations. So this quite is in line with the hypothesis. But we also see some exceptions. For example, O there is a rather um, small manuscript, but there are almost no abbreviations. So this is not in line with my hypothesis. And here, um, and it's in my whole research like that, we need to think about other mechanisms. For example, I think here the target audience may play a role. For example, um, OS, uh, we are dealing with a very luxury self-study text for someone from the economic upper class. So maybe this explains why the copyist didn't use that much abbreviations. But in general, the hypothesis seemed to be confirmed. However, there's another thing I really um, need to think of. Um, if we leave out the two extreme data points, G and C, we get this image. And that is because I'm dealing with a rather small um, corpus and leaving out one or two um, data points can change the image totally. So to conclude some to-dos in my research, um, at this point I'm lemmatizing my corpus with a Pi software because I told you in the beginning, I'm really uh, interested in, for example, spelling variation. But on the other hand, we also want to look at lexical variation. And to do that, it's handy to um, lemmatize a corpus. A second thing I maybe want to do is update a stemma from Verdam and Leenders, because I told you it's based on 10 text witnesses. But by now, we have seven new text witnesses. And we are really eager to discover how they relate to this older stemma, where do the text witnesses diverge, where do they converge, and I think by creating a stemma I get a better sense of the manuscript tradition. And last but not least, I want to try to annotate textual variants, um, because now this is a very nice quantitative analysis, but I'm also really um, interested in, in a qualitative analysis, so I can really try to understand this very complex uh, copying process by medieval scribes. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.